Okay, so where to start here? Well, we ended up at a creek on some private property way out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> Don't cut corners. <laughs> it's bad. Why are we doing Charlie? It's really weird. There's, so there's a ton of um, old scrap metal in the river here. But apparently, if you collect enough of it, um, they pay you. So here in Australia, it floods a lot. It also has bushfires and numerous other things like cyclones, which are like hurricanes in the Southern Hemisphere. So during these floods, sometimes really bad stuff gets flushed down the river. And we're talking like entire houses, cars, people's livelihoods, bicycles, shopping trolleys. It's a lot. It turns out if you pull old bits of stuff that other people don't like, and in this case, scrap metal from some like foundry kilometers away, if you get enough of this stuff and it weighs a ton, you put it in a bucket, put it in a trailer, take it to your local recycler and they pay you cold hard cash. As it turns out, it's a great way of hanging out, building some muscles, making some money and saving the environment. Whoa! Can you see it through the trailer? Oh, I don't know. How, much, how many kilos do you reckon we got? I guess it's between three and four hundred. Between three and four hundred kilos of like molten old metal. Um, and, and now we're going to go to this place and I'm, I'm told there's this big magnet that comes down. Spoiler alert, there was no giant magnet and quite frankly I was disappointed. And then they pay you for it, so I've never seen this before. Charlie funny. exploring the world of recycling. We should have a jingle for that. Like, <laughs> Charlie explores. <laughs> Next time we do this, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, don't tell me, I'll probably do that. <laughs> Can't really zoom there. Whoa, 3.7 3. 7 tons. So at this point, we got less work done than we thought because I basically talked at Jared because I was so excited about what we were doing. Um, anyway... What is Charlie doing? Bridge. We were 3.68 before. Five, half a ton! My goodness, what result? Good, Good right? He's happy, he's happy! Happy, happy! Oh, hey. The metal's gone up two cents a kilo, which is awesome. Okay. So what's that? So this says metal. 520 kilos of incised steel at 38 cents a kilo. $197.60. Boom. Well done. Cold hard trash to cash. <laughs> Go to. Mm. Are you thinking about all the money that you're putting in the bean? Well, this is just a little example of what circular economy can do and what it represents. And it was just a very small amount of resources and we made $200 in like three hours or four hours of work. Yes, between a lot of people, yes, you, you can make your numbers and think that this is not viable. But we are talking about microeconomies, micro jobs that can generate new opportunities for everyone. By creating a recirculation of the resources that we have already extracted from the air. And this is fantastic! It's something that we should be doing everywhere. 
A study by the World Bank and the Japanese government. This study is called uh, What a Waste 2.0. And it says that we generate around 2 billion tons of waste every year and it only accounts for the richest and the biggest countries, most of it, because they don't have all the data. Imagine how much money are we wasting? <laughs> we are throwing resources to the bin. This amount of waste is enough to fill 800,000, 800,000 Olympic swimming pools. Can you even imagine? And just a very small percentage of this waste that we are producing gets recycled. So, what are we doing to improve this? And whose responsibility is it? Is it our responsibility because we are the consumers? Is the company's responsibility because they are the producers? Or is the government's responsibility because we have given them the power to make this type of decisions for a society? And if this wasn't enough, it is expected that the waste production in the world is gonna be around 3.40 billion tons of waste. 3.40 billion tons of waste. And this is expected to be by 2050. If we don't do something right now to start reducing the waste that we are producing, we will get there and it's gonna be even worse than it's already. Because if there are no measures in the countries that are like under development, it means that we may already be in on the 3.40 billion tons. <sighs> but if we don't want to get to the point by 2050 that I don't think this planet can resist more waste, we have the power to do something. And I want to invite you to take action to take action in, in changing some habits. Imagine this, the market has two main interactions, right? You have the offer and you have the demand. Think about this. The offer is what the companies are giving you to buy and the demand, right? That is really what the public is asking for or what the public requires. If we increase our demand in sustainable products or products that really show they are making a change to reduce waste or reuse waste, then the rest of the offer will have to just pivot that way. We tend to think that we make the decisions on what we buy, but how many of these decisions that we make on the things that we buy have been influenced by a marketing campaign. So if we pay just a little bit more attention, we may be able to turn things around for the planet and reduce the amount of waste that we produce. And yes, this takes some effort. And I know there is a lot of people out there that think that climate change doesn't exist. Oh, it has been proven that climate change doesn't exist. Um, but independently of that, this is our home and I don't really appreciate to walk around my house and it being all full of waste everywhere. Um, so if you like a clean home, let's implement some things that will make our home a little bit cleaner. Apparently to, you only need 20% of the population in the world to change a habit in order to change a whole generation. So, when if we're more, it counts. It always counts. But these are just some ideas, you know? Just be conscious about the things that you buy. Um, make sure you have like a carry-on uh, shopping bag so you don't buy the plastic bags. Because if every time you go to supermarket you are buying a new bag because you forgot your old bag, Realistically, we are not doing anything. Yes, we are not doing anything. 
<laughs> so let's read from this list and let's talk about like which ones are these uh, little changes that we can accommodate in our day-to-day -day life that will make our planet much more cleaner. Think before you buy. Let's start with packaging, okay? So packaging is one of the biggest issues that we have. Why? Because packaging gets used only once. If the package, the packaging cannot be recycled, don't buy, okay? If you have to buy it, try to find one that has a packaging that is sustainable or at least biodegradable. And if you own a company that produces something, find ways to create packaging that is um, biodegradable. There are many options out there now available, like mycelium, uh, cocoa fiber, uh, multiple natural fibers that you can make your molds out of. And they are biodegradable. They can be used just once and then they just decompose. Say no to is possible. Well, water bottles, coffee cups. <laughs> Carry your water bottle. There are water bottles that can be like pressed down. There are bo water bottles that are very light or reuse a, a bottle that you have at home. Try or, or buy water that comes in different containers like mm, aluminum, like cans or glass. Reduce your food waste and separate your food waste from the rest of the waste. <laughs> How to reduce your food waste? Don't buy what you need. Try to use everything that you have in your fridge. But also separate your food waste from your normal waste. Why you need to separate your food waste from your normal waste? Well, you see, when the organics are decomposing, they start, they have a lot of water. And this water, what water does is that water start run off chemicals and particles that are like in the plastic, batteries, like everything else that is in that same waste. So what we need to do is separate our waste. We can manage our compostable waste in different ways, right? We can give it to the chickens. <laughs> if you have some, um, you can have a warm compost, you can have um, bacteria compost, or nowadays they're like these composters that you can connect to the electricity and they basically burn your food and then you just drop it into the plants. Try to find ways either locally with your community or in your day to day life that you can manage your organic waste. Trust me, it's not that hard. It feels hard because our lives are very busy, but having contact with the planet creates a lot of really good things for your brain. Trust me. It's a therapy. Buy second hand, handmade or local. Try to support a small economy. Try to support local economies. Why to buy from the locals and handmade? Well, usually the things that are made for locals, they have a small footprint, like carbon footprint, because they are not traveling from very, very far away if they are handmade. And also buying second hand. There are places like Facebook Marketplace that is amazing. In Australia, um, most of the charities, they have op shops and the money for the op shops is used to save lives um, and in really good causes. So we win for the whole society. Whatever is for you waste, sometimes it can be a treasure for somebody else. So keep that in mind every time that you're gonna throw something out. And I wanted to just leave those tips with you um, as like something to think about. Um, I do believe that we are the change that we need in this planet. We can continue waiting for politicians, our big corporations to make a change. Um, we are more. <laughs> when I say we, I mean us, everyone. Everyone has the power to make a difference. 
and I want you to get your power today. Use your power today. We can do better. We can do better than what we are doing now. We can produce better and consume better. Balance, balance. Trying to find um, a balance with the planet, an equilibrium. We are in an ecosystem, so let's make this ecosystem work with us, not just for us. And this is everything for today. In the descriptions, um, leaving the, this study, uh, if you want to check it out, uh, just you'll find it there. Have a lovely day and thank you so much for watching.